on life support and in a coma. 31 year old Sean Bills suffers from pneumonia in both lungs. Uh, symptoms people have come in with are uh, probably most commonly shortness of breath, cough, uh, often fever, often flu like symptoms. <laughs> It's an unnerving scene. The body of a teen spasming in a coughing fit on a ventilator just to breathe. In late July, Tristan's family sat by his side day after day, not knowing what was wrong as he lay in a medically induced coma. One Monday, I just woke up and I was just feeling really sick. And I just thought like I was coming down with a cold or something. Some people have been quite ill. Other people have, other people have been less ill. And I think our big concern is that we just don't have a good sense of what exactly in these vaping products are causing these illnesses. So the first slide I'm going to show you is the CT scans from these patients and you can see that they are highly abnormal. There is bilateral lung abnormality, meaning on both sides, there's a kind of haziness in the lung that's called ground glass opacities. And then there's a more dense kind of abnormality in some areas that is called consolidation. And then, which is the most controversial part of this uh, pathology and I, I think is going to engender a lot of debate in, in coming months, if not years, is the presence of a particular kind of cell called a macrophage. We can see here in a patient under investigation an area of peripheral ground glass opacification with a more focal area of consolidation superimposed on the ground glass opacification. This is a case of confirmed COVID-19 where the patient has this peripheral area of consolidation, although there do remain some areas of ground glass opacification within the more consolidative airspace opacities. A study by Cambridge University researchers mapping the evolutionary path of the virus as it spread from Wuhan, China, found three distinct strains in different parts of the globe. Dr. Peter Forster and his team analyzed 160 genomes from patients and found that the strain in Wuhan mutated from an earlier version. So what I wanted to do in this research, together with my colleagues, is to uh, identify the original viral genome, the original viral genome type. The three distinct strains were dubbed A, B and C. Forster and his team found that the closest type of COVID-19 to the one discovered in bats, type A, was present in Wuhan but not the city's predominant virus type. Type A is the original type that would have infected humans. Then it would mutated and change into a type B. This type B was then the first genome to be picked up in Wuhan when the disease became apparent. Um, and so researchers might be forgiven for thinking at the time that B is the original type, um, but actually it's, it's not. It's type A, which in Wuhan is only a minority type, but B has become the majority type during the outbreak. Um, and that is mutated further into C. Now the C type is not found in the early phase of the outbreak in uh, in China. It is found outside. For example, it's well represented in Singapore. What is now important to consider is that the earliest genome which has been placed into the database is not necessarily the origin of the disease. That, that is not um, a valid approach. And I'm, I'm saying this because there are people who do take this approach, but that's not the way to do it.
on to the Wuhan military games in October of 2019. And in March, she reported that back then, many people in her delegation, including herself, were sick. And recently we discovered that there was a case in France, December 27th, and that case was a man who got infected by his wife and then they infected their child. So that's relatively strong evidence of human to human transmission. France has now confirmed that on the 27th of December, they had human to human transmission happening in their borders. That made the world kind of reevaluate this situation with these athletes getting sick. So it turns out that not only has there not been an investigation this entire time, the French government said it will not test any athletes who went to the Wuhan and military games. And not only are they not testing the athletes, they also told the athletes not to speak to any media. So they've been gagged and they're not going to be tested. They're in Frederick, Maryland. The CDC has now shut down Fort Detrick. Let's find out what Fort Detrick is and what it's all about. Fort Detrick is research into deadly viruses and biological weapons at the U.S. Army lab was shut down over fears they could escape. Fort Detrick researchers banned from working with anthrax, Ebola, and smallpox until the procedures have improved. We'll scroll down here and I wanted to show you some of these areas. The Army's Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, based at Fort Detrick, says its primary mission today is to protect the war fighter from biological threats, but its scientist center at Fort Detrick is unclear. They're talking about being shut down for weeks, possibly months. A decision for the CDC and prevention to shut down a Fort Detrick military lab may affect research underway there. At the time of a cease and desist letter from the CDC, the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases was working on a multi-year project to develop antibody-based therapies for four lethal viruses. And what is this research paper? It is the Broad Spectrum Coronavirus Antiviral Drug Discovery. Hmm. And it came out of Fort Detrick. Okay, so let me repeat. Two doctors at Fort Detrick published in 20, uh, it was uh, written and released in August of 2018, and it was published in February of 2019 a paper on broad-spectrum coronavirus antiviral drug discovery. One of the names on the report was someone who I've never studied before. It was actually the Fort Detrick science director. Ooh, what's, this, what's this handsome fellow's name? Siri Bavari. This is very important. When this happened, everything started. Now, of course, that could be a coincidence. That could just be a total random lucky coincidence, right? It just so happened that a lab working on coronavirus and bats just so happened to have a leak right before the time period when we had random illnesses that were tied to the exact same symptoms of the coronavirus we're dealing with now that ended up having the exact same symptoms in other places around the world that, you know, ultimately led to being coronavirus, but it's not the same one from the Fort Detrick that had the same exact things in the same exact time. It's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to have this have never been researched, right? The CDC, the World Health Organization, the Trump, any, nobody is even caring to look at Fort Detrick. How is that possible? In June, the CDC goes to this medical facility and they find that this facility has not been following protocols about containment. And it's exactly at this point that vaping illness, which had been its symptoms, are literally almost exactly the same as COVID-19. Even the lung CT scans, which are very strange, are strange in the exact same way as they are strange in COVID-19. They have a sort of a ground glass appearance inside of the lungs. It also causes pneumonia, fever. And here is Fort Detrick. It's in Maryland. So right around the time that they canceled this phase one project, a mystery respiratory disease is reported in Northern Virginia. There are over 60 elderly people infected and there are deaths and some of them have contracted pneumonia. Wisconsin reports a vaping illness cluster how do people form a cluster if it's non-communicable? 
don't know. Two deaths from the mystery respiratory illness reported. And here on the 15th of July, 2019, the CDC sends a cease and desist letter to the lab, telling them essentially to shut down most operations. Then we see another death related to this mystery respiratory disease that's causing pneumonia. And then we find another mystery respiratory illness that's causing pneumonia. That one is right here, right outside of Washington, D.C., which is the headquarters for all of these operations. The CDC looks into those two nursing homes that aren't related to each other, that both are in the proximity of this laboratory, that both fell victim to an unexplained respiratory illness that causes pneumonia. And they declare that the cause is the common cold. By this point, the case rate has more than doubled in one month. This is the earliest theorized date of the COVID-19 outbreak. Starting around October of each year, the CDC starts to track the flu season. And that begins here on the 28th of September. The next day is the peak vaping illness cases. From the day after they start tracking flus till now, the cases have inexplicably gone down. No one knows why the cases of vaping illness started to go down as soon as they started reporting on flu illness. With this evidence, you could say it's possible that the US military was doing experiments on animals using coronaviruses. And because they failed to follow protocols for containment, there was an outbreak nearby. The CDC found out about this, investigated what was happening, told the public it was a common cold, and then shut down the lab. Then they started reporting the outbreak as cases of vaping illness, which had nearly identical symptoms. Then they waited until flu season started and started transferring those over to regular flu and just chalking it up as, oh, this is a bad flu season. And then, either intentionally or accidentally, somebody who went to Wuhan was infected and spread that virus to Wuhan. So, but a crazy thing about this vaping illness is it's so similar to COVID-19, it even has the situation where you will treat somebody with antibiotics and they'll seem to be getting better and then come back in their pneumonias even worse, which is almost exactly the definition for pneumonia of an unknown cause. So the only reason that we call this vaping illness is because the thing that everybody has in common is that they're vaping. But the interesting thing is, vaping also increases your likeliness of getting COVID-19. And this is according to doctors, not according to me. So it could be the case that these people were contracting COVID-19 because they were vaping. Maybe a weaker form of the virus that needed you to be vaping or have weakened lungs to invade your body.